The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to Jesus and objected, Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast but yours? Your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins. And both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord. It seems like on our first reading in the book of Samuel, it seems like God is really tough on poor Saul. It brings about the question of obedience and legitimate authority. Samuel is asked to conquer and literally exterminate one of their enemies. And he's given a mandate by God through the prophet Samuel to do this. In the course of that, uh, he, there, to exterminate means everything because everything must be disposed of because there could be a hint of idolatry from this conquering, from this people they're conquering. In other words, they don't want to pollute their culture, and they don't want to pollute their faith, and they don't want to pollute their country with something that's not of God. And so they're told to put this under the ban. And Samuel takes it upon himself to make a little exception. And the first thing that should strike us is this. If he was so right in doing this. Why didn't he go to Saul, Samuel and say, hey, Samuel, you know, I was thinking about this. I mean, you're in with the Lord and you're his prophet. Can you clarify this for me? He didn't do that because he knew what the answer would be. And so now he's in a type of disobedience. And if you look carefully at the scriptures, it tells us that there's all, the, the, it, it just kind of throws in there in the, in the scriptures this mention about divination is rebellion and presumption is the crime of idolatry. Well, it seems that sacrificial offerings in that, in that culture that they conquered, they used sacrificed animals to you use a cult as an occult means of predicting the future and seeing and forecasting the future. And, and it just struck me as peculiar when I was reading that, that that is mentioned. And so it seems like the men who took these things, these animals, they, they, wanted, to, they wanted to find out what the future was without talking to God about the future. And they're also using occult means to do it. In other words, they're inviting spirits not of God. And then they're presuming that because they had a good intent, that this is the right thing to do, but it has led them literally in acts of adultery because now they're offering these animals, not necessarily as an offering for the Lord, like Saul said they did, but they're really doing it as a sacrifice so that they can see the future. 
A little later on in the books of Samuel, Saul has a run-in with this kind of divination. He bans it, but he also makes an exception for himself in the practice of it, which is totally reprehensible to God. And so he's really in deep. It's, it is, there's a lot more to the surface. Now, his fault here is he never saw a legitimate authority to consult with. And, and I was thinking, I was thinking how many times as a teenager, like, it was always better to ask for forgiveness than permission from your parents, most of the time. So you, you take it upon yourself as a teenager to say, well, I know mom and dad said this, but I, this looks like the right thing to do. And then when you get home, you're, you're grounded for like, till you go to heaven or something, I don't know. But it's, ta- it's terrible, because you know you blew it. Your intent all along was not to obey. Now, how, when you consult a legitimate, legitimate authority, however, a legitimate authority can speak to things. For example, now here in the gospel, Jesus is being questioned about laws of fasting. And what he's doing is he's quoting this business about the wedding feast. Can the guests fast with the bridegroom? No, they can't. He's actually quoting a rabbinic law that said, in order to not compromise the joy of the wedding, you can be dispensed from fasting. And the guests should do that. It's like it's a law not to fast in the midst of a wedding. I knew a priest who was a canon lawyer, and he said, if you know the law, you can find almost any answer and, be, and still be right with the Lord. And so here, Jesus is using the law, but he is also a legitimate authority, but he's also using references to a legitimate rabbinic authority to substantiate what he's saying. And so he applies it to his situation. I was reminded of a situation with um, St. John Paul II. He stumbled upon, I believe it was in the streets of Rome, he stumbled upon a priest who had left the ministry. And he invited him back to ministry. And when after he had d- done that and the priest, the lapsed priest, had agreed Pope John Paul said to him, would you hear my confession? It was a great act of mercy. And the priest said to him, I have no faculties. And he said, I'm the Pope. I'm restoring your faculties. And then they went to, through the ritual means to do that later, but he was restored as a priest. But that act of him giving him, using his authority to dispense him and allow him to hear his confession was literally a soul-shaking event for that priest and the hook that pulled him right back into the net of Christ. The, The moral of the story here, if we can reduce all this, is, is that, um, We're not necessarily free to make exceptions to rules on our own. In prayer, however, when we consult legitimate authority, then we can do that. Sometimes we don't get the answer that we want when we want it, so we take matters into our own hands, and then problems ensue, as in with, you see, with Saul. And so in trust and in faith, we wait for God to give us the proper answer through proper authorities, and that becomes our truth. And that is the way to holiness and getting closer and drawing to the Lord. Resurrexit, sicut dixit,